I have another low carb ketogenic meal I want to share with you. Today it's cabbage and kibbalsa soup. If you're interested, keep watching. So cabbage and kibbalsa soup. So simple, really it is. Very few ingredients that go into this. Very easy to put together. Highly nutritious, but more importantly, really, really tasty. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll take you down to the ground where my little table is set up. I'll show you the ingredients that go into making this meal. I'll get a fire started in my wood stove and we'll cook it up. All right, let's go over the ingredients for this meal. As I mentioned, very simple. And the uh, star ingredients, the first two things are cabbage and kibbalsa. Now the cabbage I'm using today is red cabbage and I have actually, the more I look at it, I think more than two cups. But in the recipe that I'm sharing with you, I'm using two cups of cabbage chopped up into bite-sized pieces, the best way to say it. I think I have a bit too much here, so I may not add it all into my pot. Don't have to use red. I just happen to have a red cabbage that was donated to me by my brother-in-law, so that's why I'm using that. So there's my cabbage. Now, this is my kibalsa. I can use, now here's the thing about using a kibalsa sausage like that is you don't have to. You can use any other sausage you want. Kibasa is going to give it the flavor that really makes it stand out. But uh, you don't have to use kibasa. Any good smoked sausage of a similar nature should work just as well for this purpose. So in here, I have seven ounces of uh, kibasa sausage. And you can see I cut it to not quite half inch thick, and then I just cut it in half. It gives good sized pieces for frying up, which is gonna be our first step, and then good sized pieces for scooping out of my bowl when I go to eat it. So those are the two primary ingredients, but in addition, I have in here some other ingredients that give it a lot of flavor as well as nutrition, if I can get the cap off. It's good to know that it's airtight. So in here, I have chopped onion, chopped green pepper. I could have used green and red bell peppers. I use green red peppers and um, a, what is this? Oh, it's probably a habanero pepper. There's a red one in here all chopped up as well. Um, so these are into the diced and minced. So not minced being smaller, diced being slightly larger. So what do I have in total in here? I have a half cup of onion diced up. I have a uh, half of a big bell pepper. It was kind of big, the one I took out of the fridge, diced up. So you could use a small, a whole of a small one. One uh, hot pepper, and that's that one. Now, I have a few more ingredients. Here I have two cloves of garlics all diced up. Now, I've got them separated because I'm going to be putting them in the pan at different times, so you don't want them all to go in at the same time. And um, the other thing that you need for this is beef bone broth, beef or beef broth or bone broth of some type. And you're going to be looking for three cups of bone broth. Well, uh, transporting liquid bone broth out in the woods doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So I'm using a product called Better Than Bullion, and it is a, well, uh, let me see, kind of a paste that you buy in a jar at the grocery stores. And you can see it's a uh, Exactly that, pasty. This is concentrated, so I have two tablespoons of it here, and that'll easily give me the three cups of bone broth I need to make this. Now, on top of that, there's only a few things, which is your seasonings, and for this, simple salt and pepper. And I do have my spice kit, so if I want to add more flavor to it, I can add some uh, more heat to it if I want to. But sim simple salt and pepper should be all that I need. Okay, so the steps for, the pro for pro cooking this up will be to start with, I am going to be uh, sauteing the uh, kibbalsa sausage until it browns all over. And then I'm going to be adding in, well, taking them out, putting the onions and the peppers in the fry pan until they are soft. Then I will be adding in my garlic just for a moment or two. I don't want it to get burnt. And from there, all of that is going to go into a pot of water along with the cabbage. How simple does that get? All right, let's get this fire started and we'll get the pot or the pan on the stove to start with. Okay, just to save a little bit of time, I decided to reconstitute my beef broth from that better than bullion uh, paste uh, in my pot of water here. Um, while I'm doing this, and it's, it's ready now, while I'm doing this, I just want to point out, I, this is the fire maple Antarctic Duo. It is the pot I just uh, said I just recently reviewed. And uh, it's nice because it's 
everything is contained to the pot, to bowls, to sporks, uh, you know, everything you need to cook up with. The only comment I had about it was using it over a fire. It is stainless steel, but as you can see, it has a plastic lid made of Triton is the material. And I was con concerned about using it over a fire because I thought the flames might lick up and damage the outside. Well, the flames have been licking up the side, but they haven't been so high that they're damaging the edges. And the silicone handle as well is still uh, not being affected by the heat any. And just to point out, I am using the uh, Fire Maple Maverick three-sided wood stove, which is more of a fire pit. So uh, it should allow, or it would allow, quite a bit of flame to come up around the side. I do like cooking over this stove though. Anyway, so this is now simmering away. So my beef stock is ready. It'll still be hot when I need to add it back in, but we can move on, move on over to the, putting the fry pan on. You can see my fire level is reducing. Still may be a little hot, so I'll have to keep my eyes on it. And I'm just going to give it a second to start to warm up before I add my oil. So uh, I am using the 8-inch Fire Maple fry pan, stainless steel fry pan. Again, something I recently reviewed. It's nice to have everything from the same company all designed specifically for what I'm doing, which is cooking out in the woods over an open fire. I really like that uh, ability to do that with these items. So what I'm doing now is just preheating my pan before adding the oil. That's one of the tricks to keeping things from sticking is to preheat your pan, allow the pores in the metal to open up some, add your oil, allow your oil to, oil to heat up, and then add whatever it is you're cooking. And don't put too much heat underneath it, which is also very important. So this recipe is uh, adapted from a recipe that I had for cooking at home and it's literally half the size. It's meant to be a six-person recipe. Honestly, it's more like a Oh, a six serving recipe. It's more like a, a four serving recipe at the most. So I've cut it in half and I'm going to consider it a two serving recipe because, you know, it's, it makes a fair amount of food, but uh, it would have been small if I had made it any, uh, cut it in half all the way down. Uh, so what am I doing? Um, the reason I mention that is, is I'm adapting it from the stock pot or the, the Dutch oven that was suggested for use at home and using two different pans, uh, one to heat up and cook most of the ingredients and then add everything into the first one to, uh, simmer the, the soup together because this isn't deep enough to, to do all of that. It's pretty close though, you know. I may change my mind. <laughs> we'll see. All right, now that uh, my pan is warm, I added my oil. Oil is warming up. How warm? If you start to see it smoke, you're ready. So just before smoking and it's doing that. So I'm going to put these in and they are sizzling. Might be a little hot underneath. If it turns out it's a little bit hot, then I will lift the pan off of the oil. It's also a little uneven. And all I'm trying to do here is just to get them a little golden brown, which I think is not going to take too long at all. So what I'll do is I'll work at this, get these golden brown, flip them over a couple of times. And when they're nice and golden brown, then we'll move on to the next step. Oh, yeah, I think we're, we're there now. Don't want them to brown up too much, just enough to get that nice, kind of a glazy look to them. A little bit of it sticking to the bottom of the pan, which is in fact what you want in this case. They're not stuck, they're not burning, but that glaze on the bottom of the pan once all the uh, other ingredients go in, we'll actually add to the flavor. So there's an idea of what I'm looking for. Some of them done a little bit more than others, but that's just fine. Let's check the fire. You can see pretty low flame. I did put in a few more pieces of wood. All right, so next step at this point is to add butter. Now, I don't carry butter into the woods, but I do carry ghee. So I need about a tablespoon of ghee, and I'm not sure that's quite enough. So cold out here today, you can probably tell. So my ghee is hard as a rock. Okay, there's my ghee at it. I'll give that a second to melt down in there. Ghee being clarified butter, so all the benefits of flavor that butter gives it, but 
less likely to burn and doesn't go bad when you're carrying it in the woods. So right there's that all kind of melted in. Now I'm adding my onions, my green peppers, and my hot peppers. And I'll fry these up. You start to see it's filling this pan up quite a bit. I may have underestimated how much room this was going to take up by the time I'm ready. I think it'll all go into that pot that I have. Maybe I should have cut this back just a little further in terms of the ingredients or brought a larger pot. I mean, either way you want to look at it. But that is going to take a minute for those to all wilt down. I think I can probably make that happen a little faster if I put a lid on. So my aluminum fry pan that I like to use for a lid when baking also works as a serving plate for anything else. Will help to keep the heat in and help those things to uh, get soft a little quicker inside. So what I'll do is work on this for a few minutes and when it's ready for the next step that's when I'll bring you back. All right been just a couple more minutes maybe five more minutes since I put those in. Let's have a look and see what we have. Oh yeah. Yep, my onions are starting to brown. Hopefully you can see that. Everything is wilting down, getting soft. Let's see what our flame level looks like. See, not too high. Don't want too much flame. All right, next step, the garlic. And the garlic only gets sauteed for about a minute. Just enough for it to start to soften, but before it starts to brown. I will take this minute to do that, and then I'll bring it back for the next step. All right, so my garlic's been in for a minute. Everything is Cooking up just the way I wanted it to. Let's tip it up so you can see what's going on in here. Onions are browned. Peppers are soft. The sausage is all browning up nicely. And the garlic is just starting to soften up. Okay, how's my flame? Still nice and low. Good. Okay, now, bit of a full disclosure here. I did overestimate or or underestimate, you will say, the size of the pot that I needed for this. I should have been using maybe something larger than the fry pan and the duo pot to cook in. So what I have done is, as I showed earlier, in here I put my beef stock, reconstituted beef stock, and I have three cups of it in there right now. So what I did is I took some of my cabbage and I put it in there to start to simmer or at least to start to get soft in the hot water. What you would normally do in a properly sized pan or pot is to now add the cabbage directly to the pan like this. Break it up a little bit. You can see it's good sized chunks. Not that one. That one hit the ground. It's normally I would just pick it up and eat it. But so I'm going to add what I have here directly to the pan. You saw this, saute this for a few minutes to soften it up. And then we would add our beef stock to this to simmer for about 15 minutes. Doesn't look like I'm going to be able to add too much beef stock into this pan, but that's okay because I'm going to try and make all of this go into the duo. So once I've got this simmered, we'll come back and we'll see if we can uh, do exactly that. Transfer everything into the duo. If not, I'll put some in here and some in the duo. And I'll just spread it out between the two of them. So that's about five minutes, I would say. And I have two other ingredients to add to this. Very minor ingredients, but they make a big difference in the final flavors. All right, I'll bring you back in a few minutes. All right, so this is going to be a little unorthodox, not the way I had anticipated cooking this meal, but being flexible and trying to adapt to the conditions and the equipment I have, I have come up with an idea. So I'm just, uh, what I'm doing now is there is some browning on the bottom of the pot. It is not burnt, it is not stuck, but it's browning from all the ingredients 
and that's where the flavor is. So I'm just trying to mix it in. Okay, so the cabbage that I put in here, not a whole lot of it, but some, is now wilted down pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pour some, not all, but some of the beef broth directly into my fry pan. I'm using the lid that came on the dual because it has nice straining holes so I can do that. I can add my broth without losing the contents. You see that all going in there? Now I'm getting, actually I'm getting most of it in there. That's, uh, this fry pan is pretty good. It holds quite a bit. But we don't want that little piece of leaf. So you can see what I have now which is my soup starting to take shape. Should have been a deeper pan, I admit that again. Two more ingredients. This simmers for about 15 minutes. Uh, that's a taste test thing. You just try it and see if you like the textures and if you do, then you're ready. Of course, the longer you let it simmer, the more the flavors move through all the ingredients, the better the final product. But uh, minute, let's say 15 minutes, we'll go with that for today. I'm adding my salt and pepper now. And one more ingredient, vinegar. Just one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. Could be regular white vinegar. I, I have apple cider vinegar at home. It has, it's a bit more pungent, a bit more strength and uh, sharpness to it than the white vinegar. Now, really, it's just a matter of simmering for a period of time. And somehow, I'll have to decide if I'm just going to use what I have in the fry pan or if I'm going to add the rest of it in here or put it in the other one. But in the meantime, really it's just a waiting game to keep it simmering over relatively low heat so we're not boiling it. And that is just on the level of being too high. I'll have to keep an eye on my fire to make sure it doesn't get too hot. All right, about 15 minutes, I'll bring you back. All right, so I let it go probably 20, maybe even 25 minutes. Uh, here's the solution I came up with. You can see I've got a good simmer on right now, all my ingredients, a little bit high. I've got the fry pan <laughs> about as absolutely full as I could possibly manage it. So what I had done is I strained as much of the beef broth into the fry pan and put all the cabbage in that I could. So there's no cabbage left in my pot. All the cabbage in there, it's just short a little bit of the beef broth just to, for space. So. Really, all my ingredients minus about how much? Uh, about a cup. About a cup of the beef broth is there. So my thought is, I would serve this into my bowl, add a little bit of the beef broth, which I've been warming up on and off, and uh, then it would all work out because for, for space, as far as that goes, because all the ingredients minus one cup is in here. So that's what I'm going to do. I will transfer a good sized portion into this little bowl here, and we'll set up for a taste test. All right, I have my meal in this little bowl. Yeah, it is full to the top. Hopefully I can give you a little bit of a look at it. Is that showing up there? Can't tip it too far, of course, because it's full of fluids. Go put a glove under it for my hand to hold on to. So the bowl is part of the uh, Fire Maple Antarctic Duo set. Two bowls, two sporks inside of the pot with a few other things. Let's see. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. One more try. Got to get a piece of the pork. Can you see the sausage, the Polish sausage or kibelsa? Mm-hmm. Sorry. Okay, first impression is two spoonfuls. Number one, let's talk about the sausage first. Spot on, you really do need to brown it to get some texture to it. So you brown it, but don't burn it in the pan. Once that's done, it maintains that crustiness to the outside of it, which really adds to the texture and the flavor of the sausage. You might think a sausage like this is greasy, but in, in the context of this entire meal, it's not at all. 
Not that I mind a little bit of oil in my food or a little bit of fat in my food, but I don't like things that are so greasy that they override the flavors or the textures, and that hasn't happened at all. Uh, onions, green peppers, hot peppers, all sauteed, as well as the garlic, all sauteed down to a nice, soft texture. The vinegar, not as much of an impact as I thought it might have. I might throw in a little bit of extra vinegar. I'm trying to create that slightly sweet and sour kind of a, of a texture to it or, or a uh, flavor to it. It didn't really occur. And the heat, here's what was surprising. One small pepper, that's all it took, cut up in this entire meal, and I have enough heat. And the heat wasn't up front. The heat came as I swallowed it. So that's what's nice. So you get all the flavor. You can distinguish the cabbage, the garlic, the onions. The beef broth. And then the heat from the peppers start to, to come on. And that's where you want it. You don't want it to override all the other flavors. Man, this actually turned out really well. I've not made this in the woods before, you can probably tell. Otherwise, I would have had a bigger pot. Mmm. Complex flavors. Oh, this is tasty. Wasn't quite sure how it would turn out when I was out here. And then I ran into the complication of having the wrong size pots and pans. I mean, they worked because I made them work. You would be better off with something bigger than either of the ones I had. But the flavor worked out perfectly. Beef stock, that's what it calls for. I mean, there are a variety of variations on this recipe. Some call for chicken stock, some call for beef stock. The one that I base this off of called for beef stock. And I happen to have the better than bullion paste. It comes in a jar. Maybe I'll throw a picture up on the screen just so you're, if you're interested. I got this jar at Costco, but you can get them in the grocery stores. And they come in a wide variety of flavors. Easiest way to create as strong as you want a beef broth. Bone broth would have been better only in terms of the healthiness to it because bone broth has more collagens and proteins and different things inside of it than just plain beef broth does. But flavor-wise, I don't think I could have done better than this. I'm just looking at it over there that's just simmering on the fire what I didn't get out of the pan. So this is supposed to be one serving. I don't know. When I finish this, I'm probably going to go back for seconds. Okay. Like I said, simple recipe easy to find, easy to transport, easy to prepare and cook all the ingredients. When you put them in combination like this, a nice recipe to try out. I can see I'm moving back in and out of the shadows here with the sun and the trees. I would recommend you give this one a try. Only caveat is get a proper size pan for the ingredients. Had I looked at all the ingredients on the counter, against the size of the pan. I might have, I might have uh, tried something different, but I'm not, uh, it, there was no failure here. Let's put it that way. It was just an adaptation that had to occur. Okay, if you do give it a try, let me know what you think. If you have tried this, let me know your thoughts on that. Would you do this differently? Different ingredients, different methodology in cooking this over a fire out in the woods. If you have any suggestions for future videos in the, the low carb ketogenic uh, genre of meals, Please put them in, all of that in the comments section below. I will give you the recipe in the video description, the one I used today. You're free to change it up any way you want, because, of course, that's the whole point, isn't it? To be able to modify it to suit your personal tastes. Okay, that's all I have for you today. Well, I enjoy this hot soup on this cold, early winter day. Get out and explore and take that path less traveled, because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.